So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Enables webinar. Uh, before starting, I'd like to introduce uh, Guillaume and myself. Uh, my name is uh, Jean-Yves Escabas. I am project manager at CA uh, Liten in Grenoble, France. Uh, my uh, main activity is to coordinate uh, such large projects uh, as uh, Enables. Uh, I'm in charge of the coordination of uh, the integral project. It's also in the field of energy harvesting about uh, thermal electricity. I'm also in charge of projects in the field of uh, advanced manufacturing. Okay. Guillaume? Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Guillaume Savelli, so from CA Liten, where I'm in charge of the thermal electric uh, activity. So uh, today we'll discuss about energy harvesting solutions for IoT, uh, the Internet of Things. Um, so we will uh, briefly introduce uh, the uh, Enables uh, project, uh, what it is about. Then uh, Guillaume will present the core of the webinar or on the energy harvesting solutions, uh, which are dealt with uh, in Enables, so principles, uh, a lot of latest research uh, results and uh, he will tell you how you can access our services. They are free of charge for you. Uh, they will be paid by the European Commission within the scope of the uh, Enables budget. Uh, then we will have a conclusion and then questions uh, sent by you uh, in advance. So, uh, Project uh, Enables is a European funded project within Horizon 2020. Uh, you see here uh, on the map the participating countries. It's coordinated by Tyndall National Institute in Ireland. Uh, you have two uh, CEA institutes, uh, LETI and LITEN, uh, two Fraunhofer institutes, IMS and IIS, IMEC in the Netherlands, uh, several partners in Italy, University of Perugia, uh, Politecnico di Torino, uh, University of Bologna, and uh, <clears throat> in UK you have the University of uh, Southampton, and again in Germany, uh, Karlsruhe uh, Institute of Technology, KIT. So what's the problem? What are we talking about? The uh, Internet of Things is uh, strongly developing and we're expecting up to 1 trillion of IoT devices by 2025. And of course, they are all electrically powered, they need electricity. Uh, most of them will be wireless. So how can you supply electricity uh, to a, such a device wirelessly? Well, there are opportunities, but of course they are quite challenging. Yeah? There are some uh, certain number of uh, expectations which we are tackling in Enables. So to have more information about this project, you can watch the first uh, of the uh, webinars uh, we have made, and you can see uh, this link uh, below. The problem is, first to harvest energy from the environment around the uh, devices. Uh, you have to store it sometimes, uh, we will see why. And of course, you must manage this power. It's not so simple as just to plug and play or plug and produce. On these three topics, uh, we have three uh, distinct webinars. Today is about energy harvesting. Uh, there will be one uh, about energy storage and one about micropower management. So, the challenge is to to make batteries last longer and in some case some cases lasting forever um, or because you can simply sometimes just replace them so you have to maximize the energy uh, you will extract from uh, ambient sources and you have to be realistic not every energy source is available for for harvesting uh, it has to be relatively consistent, abundant, stable. It has to be supplied in a format that it is easy to, to use and convert and store for devices. Of course, uh, your, your system 
has to cater for variations. If you have photovoltaic, uh, the light will be changing over the day, uh, sometimes over the hour or minutes. Uh, frequency in case of vibrations, temperature uh, gradients in, in case of uh, thermoelectricity. Um, those systems have to be small, uh, robust, adaptable, and easy to, to install and integrate. These are examples of uh, energy harvesting technologies uh, available. Solar, we have said it, radio frequencies, uh, electromagnetic, uh, vibrational, uh, piezo, uh, or thermoelectric. We will see them uh, in the forthcoming slides. And for this, I will pass the floor to Guillaume. Yes, thank you, Eugenie. So uh, let's go to the first uh, energy harvesting system, which is Samoa Electrics, that we developed uh, here in CE Litane. Uh, for those who don't know the principle, uh, uh, it just uh, consists in converting thermal energy uh, in electrical energy uh, using Sebeck effects. So you can see here a standard structure of thermal electric device in both technology. It's made uh, of P-type and N-type uh, thermoelectric materials electrically connected in series and thermally in parallel. And performance of uh, thermoelectric generators uh, highly dependent from material properties. So the thermoelectric materials are classified with a dimensionless parameter called figure of merit, ZT. And as you can see with this equation, the T uh, depends on the thermal and electrical conductivity and the Seebeck coefficient. If you look at the maximum of thermal electric system conversion efficiency, you can see with this equation that it depends uh, of the Carnot efficiency and the thermal electric system efficiency. And if you look at this figure, you can see that higher the T, higher the conversion efficiency. So the objective is to obtain the highest ZT possible for the thermoelectric materials. And it's so very important to measure them with a, a high accuracy. So our latest research at uh, CE Helitane consists in developing a unique process flow to characterize all thermoelectric properties, Seebeck coefficient, electrical and thermal conductivities of thin film materials in both direction in plane and, and uh, cross plane. That's very important when you develop anisotropic materials. So usually these properties are measured separately, so increasing the ZT error bar. And we develop currently a technique consisting of integrating all patterns needed to measure these three uh, thermoelectric properties in these two directions. And so you can see here some pictures uh, showing the patterns uh, we develop currently. So through Enables, we can offer free of charge access to a thermoelectric materials microstructure analysis, X-ray deflection and uh, scanning electronic microscopy. Also bulk thermoelectric materials characterization in the both direction, the Seebeck coefficient, electrical and thermal properties. For the thin film uh, thermoelectric materials, we can uh, measure the Seebeck coefficient and electrical properties in the in-plane direction and the thermal conductivity in the cross-plane direction. And finally, we are able to characterize the thermoelectric device in control atmosphere, air, inert gas, or vacuum. We can measure the electrical resistance, output voltage, and power. We can also perform device failure analysis. And here you can see some picture of the tool uh, we used for that. Okay, another uh, energy harvesting system, uh, the photovoltaic, which is developed uh, in this project by Fran of IMS. So I think everybody knows the, the principle. It consists in harvesting energy from ambient lights. Uh, IMS uh, developed miniaturized photovoltaic cell with a monolithic integration on top of a CMOS chip for autotic sensor nodes. As you can see here with these pictures, these are uh, miniaturized photovoltaic cells. They also develop amorphous silicon pin solar cells with a post-CMOS integration with standard semiconductor manufacturing equipment. Uh, 
at low temperature processes below 400 degrees C. The latest research at IMS consists in, in, in uh, increasing the power output of the photovoltaic energy harvester. For that, they optimize the absorption uh, inside the photoactive layer and they perform simulation of an optimized solar cell layer stack, as shown in this picture. They also uh, manufacture solar cell samples uh, using their clean room and uh, the characterization of the efficiency and the spectral responsivity. With Enables, uh, you can have access to concept design of solar power IoT device, which include estimation of power budget by calculation of beauty cycles, estimation of performance scaling for application, so uh, design of microelectronic circuit for integration in CMOS, so integration of temperature pressure sensors, for example, and design of wireless front ends and microcontrollers. You can have access uh, to integration of circuits in CMOS technology, processing of solar panel on top of chips, the characterization of photovoltaic energy harvester, absolute parameters, energy efficiency, spectral behavior, and finally, system and application integration, integration in network, housing for outdoor applications, for example. Another energy harvesting system based on vibration, which is piezoelectrics, developed by Fraunhofer IIS. In this case, a piezoelectric disk uh, based on PZT are used to generate electric power from any kind of movement. You can see here a standard piezoelectric disk based on PZT. A resonant generator turned to a certain frequency band by a seismic mass and a mechanical structure, as shown here. And you use an optimized ACDC converter charge battery to charge battery or supercapacitor. The latest research at IIS, they uh, develop a self-powered GPS tracking system, uh, which use vibration energy harvesting to cover its one power consumption. A dedicated power and battery management can employ different kinds of harvester to charge the integrated battery. And the uh, applications area targeted are container tracking, as shown in the picture, but also railway monitoring or animal tracking. And with enables, uh, you can have free of charge access to recording and analysis of vibrations, vibration sensors with cellular wireless and GPS module, uh, which can be mounted on any kind of object, vehicle, person, animal, asset. Then vibration data is transferred to the front of first server by mobile cellular network. The data uh, is used in the lab to characterize possible vibration harvesters. And also, you have development of complete vibration harvesting systems. Another ambient vibration energy harvesting through electromagnetic transduction developed by Tyndall. The basic mechanism in this case is uh, the following a relative motion between permanent magnet and coil induced current into the coil, as shown. Uh, schematically here. In this case, we use the Faraday's principle where the electromagnetic force uh, is directly dependent of the magnetic field. You can see some picture uh, of different type of electromagnetic uh, vibration energy harvesting system developed in Tidal, both at mesoscale and uh, also at MEMS scale. The latest research at Tindal uh, consists in developing an optimized array of magnets for high performance MEMS VEH. For that, they replace the block or thin film of magnets by array of magnets, as shown schematically here and here, where they increase the number of magnets, and by intensifying the stray magnetic field within a small volume. And as shown in this table presenting the energy harvested, 
For higher thickness of magnets, the maximum power is obtained for the magnetic block structure and also for the stripe pattern structure for lower thickness of the magnets offer higher load power. With enables, uh, you can have access to electromechanical dynamic characterization, so characterization of BH with harmonic and random vibration, the capability of programmable frequency sweeps. You can have also access to the clean room facility of Tyndall to process your membrane structure, microcoil, pattern magnet fabrication, for example. Also, the square magnetometer with high precision magnetic AC and DC characterization at low and high temperature. You have also the magnetic material development through electrodeposition by using DC and optimized pulse reverse platen. And you can have access to simulation tools also for mechanical design and analysis tool using console multiphysics or for the electromagnetic interaction analysis using uh, Unsoft Maxwell. Another uh, energy harvesting system is the switch reluctance uh, energy harvesting with parametric excitation for bearing condition hills monitoring. It's developed by University of Southampton. There is a need for an energy harvester integrated in the bearing in aircraft uh, jet engine. Existing uh, smart bearings, uh, as shown in the figure, don't have an energy harvester and the electronics are powered externally. For an integrated energy harvesting we, uh, will reduce the complex wiring, improve installation flexibility, and reduce the cost of maintenance. The latest research at University of Southampton uh, consider a macroscale transduction system based on a switch reluctance mechanism an electromagnetic transduction mechanism without a permanent magnet uh, is evaluated, and the variation of inductance in time creates a parametrically excited system. You can see the schematics in the circuit diagram here. And here you have the picture of uh, the system with the coil, the laminated steel, the moving part, and here the shaker and accelerometer. Finally, Vibration energy harvesting with nonlinear electrostatic MEMS generator. It's developed by the University of Perugia. The generator device is a gap closing comb electrode variable capacitor made on silicon with a single dask uh, etching process. When excited with horizontal vibration, the variation of the capacitance induces motion of the charge between the fixed and the moving electrode to re-equilibrate the constant bias voltage that is externally applied. The bias voltage is to, pre to precharge the capacitor, can be also generated by injecting charge in the SIO2 uh, coating, so to implement electrodes that cause a constant electric field. In the figure, you can see uh, in orange the fixed electrode, and here in green the moving part. The latest research uh, at University of Perugia consists in modeling and characterizing nonlinear MEMS uh, electrostatic vibration energy harvester and uh, investigating its integration with electrodes. So, uh, numerical simulations have been carried out with and without impacting microbial, and it fits very well experimental data of a silicon MEMS prototype. Theoretical modeling of uh, EVH uh, with HPT is under study in collaboration with the University of Southampton for design optimization and characterization. And uh, finally, integration with SiO2 electric material is in progress. Through Enables, you can have access to expertise in design, fabrication, and simulations on nonlinear vibration energy harvester, electrostatic, piezoelectric, inductive. You can have uh, access to virtual, uh, it's virtual access with a real vibration database for VH simulations and feasibility tests. And also numerical modeling and finite element analysis tool for MEMS-based vibration energy harvesting. 
Okay. Well, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Guillaume, for this uh, presentation. So, uh, to conclude, uh, you have seen all uh, several energy harvesting solutions which are uh, proposed in a project uh, enables uh, and developed by the partners. That's thermoelectricity, photovoltaic, piezoelectric, electrostatic, electromagnetic, uh, etc. Uh, Guillaume has uh, introduced technical development uh, currently performed for, for each of them, and uh, you see what we are doing, what we can offer. And of course, this um, is available for you. Uh, all our partners uh, offer you uh, their services for uh, free of charge characterization, study for energy harvesting applications, uh, energy storage, uh, micro power management. Um, so you can uh, send us uh, your, your projects, uh, your samples uh, by registering uh, on uh, our website, it's quite easy. Uh, it is free of charge for you because it's taken uh, by the European Commission in the budget of uh, enables. So you simply go online, you uh, join our database of uh, stakeholders um, for, for the uh, Internet uh, of Things energy harvesting. Uh, you can submit our projects, they will be uh, evaluated by our experts and they will be assigned to the relevant uh, enables partner. Uh, and then we will carry out your job. So please note also the contacts of Michael and uh, Julie uh, at Tyndall. Um, they will uh, forward any email you might have uh, to our partners. So uh, many thanks to uh, Enables uh, participants for preparing those slides, uh, which Guillaume has uh, showed you. And uh, now, uh, we can uh, switch to questions and answered, uh, answers. Those questions have been sent uh, to you uh, in advance and uh, we have prepared answers, uh, which uh, Guillaume will, will, will give you now. Um, question one was from uh, Yang Bai uh, from the University of Oulu. Uh, we have a new invention which combines uh, piezoelectric, photovoltaic and pyroelectric effects in the same piece of material. Would this be an interesting IoT option, option to make compact and miniaturized energy harvesters as it integrates different harvesters and even sensors in a single material? Yes, it's a nice invention as it's not easy to combine uh, all these energy harvesting systems. So it's interesting, of course, having a hybrid energy harvesting system integrated in uh, the same device for IoT applications particular uh, where these devices need to exploit multiple energy sources depending on the viability of the ambient conditions. Besides, uh, the most critical point is the cost per unit of volume of the harvesting device. So the questions we should ask are, is your technology competitive with other common solutions with batteries? Uh, can IoT applications uh, that justify the cost of the harvester and is the cost of your energy harvester a small percentage of the IoT device and over the operating lifetime effective? If the answer of this question uh, is yes, so of course it will be very interesting uh, to use this option. Thank you. Uh, question two from uh, Giovanni A. De La Rosa Bandera. Uh, is it uh, European or another project funding? Uh, what about packaging solutions? Yes. As introduced uh, by Jean Yves at the beginning of the presentation, so of course it's a, pro a European project funded by the European Union. This project starts uh, last year and uh, will finish in two years. And uh, the packaging part is not developed specifically in a project, so even if it has to be taken to account for an optimized integration, but we are more focused on energy harvesting, energy storage, and power management. Question three uh, was from Nadim Rather uh, at Tyndall. If a wireless system is designed to work only using the harvested power, 
how do we manage the uncertainty and unpredictable nature of produced power for some energy harvesting technologies? Yes, yeah, good question. If a wireless system has been designed to work only using the harvested power, it's necessary and even mandatory to add an energy storage system such as batteries, capacitors, supercapacitors to accumulate and store the energy when the energy harvesting system works in optimized conditions and of course to use it in degraded conditions. But also the use of an adapted power management system will also enable to use the energy harvesting in an optimal way. Question for, from Hazard Ganjala, uh, Hazard Industry. As experts, what do you think about using the embedded piezoelectric harvesters on roadways to produce electricity? Cost, efficiency, project from the past, etc. Can't we use these harvesters to power more than IoTs? So if you look uh, at literature, lots of research has been carried out mainly on theoretical models and it seems not cost effective. In some field tests, it results that uh, under common car loadings, the, the obtained piezoelectric energy can only light lead signs. In addition, some old startups like Innovatech failed in this project and disappeared because the approach is not economically viable considering uh, the installation cost, unless a very low cost piezo system will be invented in the near future. Question five from Anton Manakov, uh, Comberry. Uh, what is the future for lithium ion batteries and lithium polymer batteries? When then uh, solid state batteries will be on the market and what is the stopper for this technology? Also good questions. And uh, you can uh, watch the upcoming webinar which will be dedicated to energy storage, but we can start to answer. So the overriding driver for success for batteries are cost, of course, and to a lesser extent safety. From now to 2030, despite the huge increase in production capacity of the current lithium ion technology with liquid electrolyte, this is not expected to be the winding technology in the long term because batteries must become always cheaper on a cost per kilowatt basis, and this cannot come from incremental development but it requires a step change and the current generation of lithium ion technology is hitting its theoretical limits. So the current generation of lithium ion technology will keep its dominant position, but eventually the next generation lithium ion and lithium metal uh, technology will attract sufficient investment to make it a viable alternative. And the test candidates, so solid state uh, electrolyte uh, battery, so polymer and or hybrid polymer, will need to surpass multiple challenges besides finding a safe pathway through commercialization. So if you're interested uh, in this topic, you can uh, see here some reference. And uh, as I uh, already said, you can watch the next webinar uh, uh, in the framework of Enables which will be dedicated to energy storage. Thank you, Guillaume. Question six uh, from Yerne, Connect. Is it uh, possible to provide intuition uh, on how much energy are the different techniques capable of uh, collecting per day or per week? For example, in a day, this device, device is capable of connecting, collecting energy for X number of transmissions. We can make prediction on how much energy is available by using a virtual access database, where you can download vibration signals from real ambient mechanical sources or make simulations based on other energy sources, such as solar, thermal gradient, on radio frequency. So it's free of charge access, don't remember. And uh, on the other end, the energy consumption depends on the specific IoT application. So you can calculate the matching between the energy consumption for a specific use case with the available energy source taken from or enables database. So I think, yes, we have time for maybe for a last question. 
Question from me, Kaminala, at Radian Asset Management, Oakways. Given the current uh, maturity and harvesting capacity of the different energy harvesting solutions, where do you see the first major markets emerging, both application and industry-wise? Well, it's a large question. Yes, we have to distinguish different uh, energy harvesting system. Uh, so we can start for the photovoltaic. So for the photovoltaic energy harvesting, uh, the established technology of solar cells is currently the most widespread for self-powered IoT devices. Examples can be found in the monitoring of infrastructure components, roadside traffic monitoring, or environmental measurement technology, climate data. Also, indoor sensors for smart home applications are successful. Thermostar, window sensor. The solar cell is inexpensive and has a comparatively high energy yield. But you have also the following markets uh, become uh, visible in smart city with car park monitoring and management, field level of garbage bins or recycle bins, and dynamic signpost, natural disaster detection. In smart grids also with pipeline and override line monitoring, and development aids with solar powered base stations, networking of infrastructures. And in other markets, the use of solar cells is rather uh, restrained. For example, in health, automotive, smart industry, and in this case, you mainly found uh, tag and vibration uh, solutions. So for the thermoelectric uh, energy harvesting systems, you can see uh, with this picture, uh, the world market uh, for uh, thermoelectric generators. As you can see uh, in red, you have a niche, a constant niche market in spatial uh, applications, <laughs> with the RTG, so the radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which use uh, radioisotope materials as a heating source. Uh, with this market, the harvested power uh, is around 700 watts, and the TRL, the technology readiness level, which is uh, a level used to evaluate the maturity of technologies, is very high, it's nine, so this technology is very mature. And you can see uh, that you have also a large increase in two other fields. Uh, in green, here, it's other industrial. It corresponds mainly to automotive and industry. Uh, for this application, the harvested power uh, is around 700 watts to up to kilowatts. And the TRL is around uh, six to seven. And also in blue, what is called uh, double well uh, SN, it's wireless sensor network. It's, it's a part of IoT. And in this case, the harvested power uh, go from uh, hundreds of microwatts up to few milliwatts. And the TL is around six. Finally, for the piezoelectric energy harvesting system, most promising applications uh, are in the industrial sector where large machines, engines, are monitored by wireless sensors. Often they work with fixed frequency or you could uh, moon them form shaped so you don't have issues with resonance. Sensors to be powered and transmitted are typical temperature, acceleration, moisture, oil quality, CO2. All these physical quantity are measured uh, are measure of state of health of the machines and will enable predictive maintenance or maintenance on demand avoid unexpected failures or downtime. Well, thank you, uh, Guillaume, for all these questions, uh, answers to these uh, many and sometimes complex questions. Yeah. Uh, well, you have seen uh, our contacts uh, on the slides. Uh, the slides and uh, the uh, webinar has been recorded. Um, it will be available through the website. Uh, you will be notified uh, for, for their availability. So uh, don't hesitate to revert to us for any questions. We will be glad to answer you. And of course, please do register uh, to our, our database uh, and uh, submit uh, your request uh, for services. Uh, we'll be glad to uh, help you with uh, all our facilities as uh, Guillaume has showed you.
So thanks very much for your attention, for uh, participating uh, in our webinar and uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye. Thank then. you. Bye. Bye.